Hello and welcome to another episode of Atomic Vinyl Reviews. My name's Jacob, and today I've got another unboxing video for you guys. And actually, I've already kind of started this unboxing, so it is a, the box is kind of already opened a little bit because I thought it was a different figure, and I started opening it up, and I found out that in fact it is actually the third party bootleg, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Monster Arts Showa King Ghidorah 1964 figure, but the boxed version, or, in other words, it is a bootleg version of the 2019 Monster Arts Ghidorah, or at least that is what it is sold as, and you'll see why in a second. So, just for, if, in case you're not familiar, here is the first one that I unboxed, and the reason I have two, now you can watch the full review and unboxing of this one on my channel as well, but the reason I have two is because I actually tried to buy this one first, because I really wanted one of these Showa Ghidorahs, and that was the first ever listing that I found of it, and I couldn't find any other ones, and so I bought it, and then like the next day or two I found out that they were appearing a lot cheaper on eBay, and I just snagged up one of those cheaper ones, uh, which ended up being this one, and I tried to delete this listing, which is for the boxed version, uh, from AliExpress, I actually got this one. Uh, so, yeah, that explains why I have two. Now, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with, um, the second one here. Um, probably I might end up selling it, or I might end up customizing one, to be more accurate, and then just keeping the other one stock or something. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see, because I can't really afford to do much else with it. Uh, but yeah, let's get right into it. So, first of all, <laughs> look at that. This box is actually bloody huge. Look at that. <laughs> so I haven't pulled it out of its box yet. But already we can see, I was expecting this box to be a lot smaller, but this is probably the same size as the actual uh, 2019 figure. It is huge. And it does say Legend Creation right here, in the lower corner, or the upper corner. It's actually upside down. But yeah, let's pull this thing out of the box. So, come on. Get out of there. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, okay guys. So here is the front of the box and we see our figure in there. Uh, it looks like it's placed in backwards, which is kind of interesting, but yeah, there it is. Uh, compare this box to the actual 2019 King Ghidorah figure box, just so you guys know what to look for when trying to compare the two, just so you don't get scammed. So this is the actual box, I don't know if I'm going to fit these in frame, but this one here on my, um, your left, my right, is the actual King Ghidorah 2019 box, it's empty as you can see because I have my figure displayed way over there. I'm not going to bring it down because it's a bloody pain to carry around because it's huge. But, these boxes are similar in size actually. This one's actually thicker this way, the crea Legend Creation one, the bootleg, is thicker. You can see, and it's kind of got like, um, the box is built differently. It's got these sort of seam lines going down here where it's kind of placed together. And obviously the window on the front is the main difference. So you can see that there. Uh, the window of this one clearly is a big huge window, it shows the figure on the inside. And while well, this one, the actual one, has a, t a smaller window off to the, uh, on, the, on the corner here, on the side for some reason. And of course the Legend Creation one actually says Legend Creation, whereas the Monster Arts one um, has all this branding and logos running down the bottom of it here, all these le legal little uh, logos and all that sort of stuff. It has some more legal information underneath it here and It does say monster arts and stuff all over the box like here we go monster arts, but the fake one ah, The fake one also does so <laughs> Don't be fooled by that But and it does say 2019 and the back of the box Let's look at the back of the box because they are very similar. So there we go the, the real one it's a kind of a better cardboard, I can feel, and it's less crinkled, but the back of the box is very similar between these two, so there we go. Kind of gives you guys an idea of the real one right here, and the bootleg. Now, obviously, the figure is going to be all wrong, because this is the Showa Ghidorah figure. 
Uh, so let's get right into it. The way it's closed at the top here, it has two little like round clear plastic uh, tape stickers here and here. So what we're just going to do, I'm going to cut through those. Um, normally I do it like really neatly and all that sort of stuff, but this box is not neat and it's a bootleg. So we don't have to be quite as delicate with these sort of features. Opening it up. There we go. Yeah. Got that plasticky Monster Arts fresh smell. Jeez. Ah, and it's falling apart a little bit. Our figure seems to be in a few pieces. Its legs are kind of falling off here, which is funny. But it does actually have a nice box around. Uh, <laughs> it has a nice box around the figure. Done in, you know, in plastic here. Strangely enough, though, the <laughs> the faces aren't exactly in the box, like properly where they're meant to be. They're kind of all leaning to the side here, which is really awkward. But it still fits. It still somehow fit. And it looks like the ta looks like this box was actually built to house at least the tail wise longer tails. So it might the tails here might have been built to house the um, what was it called? The actual Heisei version, which does have longer tails, so they kind of fit in there, but there's a little bit of extra space for longer tails. How are the wings? These, this figure has bigger wings, and this box completely fits them perfectly, so that's a little bit odd. But yeah, interesting. Also, before we take him out of this stuff, uh, around his knees, and on, near his legs, I don't know if you guys can see that, oh no, around his, around here, and around here, near his feet, the, there are some like paint marks on the inside of this plastic here on the box. There's a couple of them like here, and down near his foot around here, there's some paint just on the inside of this plastic packaging. And I don't know about you guys, but that implies that maybe they put him in this box while the paint was still wet? Which isn't very good. Maybe. Yeah, it looks like it might have come from the claws or something like that on his feet. Although the ones on the side here, I don't know where that came from. Very strange. Anyhow, um, in this part of the box we have our flight stand. Uh, I'm not even going to open this. I already have three of these bloody things since I've been getting these, these bootleg Ghidorah figures. But yeah, let's get right into taking this box apart and... And here is our second Ghidorah uh, Showa figure. So it has a little plastic bit just there above the necks. We can... yeah, this guy's like really in pieces. They separated his wings, which is, you know, not a negative, because these things are pretty easy to install. Seems all good. I'll just grab both of these wings. All nice intact, just like the first Ghidorah that I got, his wings. And take out and we'll rest this figure. So he is kind of in pieces, unfortunately. Uh, but that's all fine. We can put him back together without much of an issue, I, I'm sure. There we go. The horns on some of these heads are a little bit bent, but that's kind of normal, and you can fix that really easily uh, with a hair dryer just to heat it up. You can see on the middle head there, his horns is one of his horns way off to the side. Uh, that again, like I said, is pretty easily fixable. Neck articulation seems nice. Again, these figures have great neck articulation, and I've kind of figured out why. They use a completely different system for the way they build the articulation in these necks. It's almost like, I'll kind of show you. So, sorry Ghidorah, we're pulling you apart. But I've learned this by looking at the other figure. You can see here, he's got the little ball joint in there. And the way these things are built is basically all of these ball joints are kind of uh, all linked together by a plastic like little chain of ball joints and sockets that are all linked together and all these sculpted pieces are just like sleeves that run around that. Whereas the Heisei Ghidorah, the other 
uh, Monster Arts Ghidorah was built differently, where the ball joints actually slotted into the sculpted plastic pieces, and that's why they are so prone to falling off. Whereas this has like its own isolated articulation parts on the inside, like a little skeleton, and the sculpted detail work is just kind of like a sleeve over that. So it's kind of interesting. But yeah, let's uh, get, get re the rest of these pieces here. There's this back piece, hopefully they all slide in easily. I may have to, and his foot, I may have to actually get a hairdryer again to get this thing working, but so far, so far, so good. We got these pieces. There's like some weird white gunk around the base of the tail here. I'm not really sure what that is, but it, whatever it is, it's probably just like plastic that's torn off of this little piece or something. But the ball joint seems to work fine. This tail's kind of falling out, but yeah, it goes back in. And we'll see if this one will slot in. It's a little hard, but it's going in. So yeah, sometimes these little ball joints, uh, especially around the base of these tails, I've had issues with with these figures, but again, heat it up with a hairdryer works like a charm. A little tip is, if you're having issues with ball joints and stuff on figures, heat will uh, help tight joints. For example, I've had some issues with these figures' hip joints, and this one seems to be no exception. These hips are a little bit tight. Uh, so, on, on particularly this leg, I always have an issue with this joint on all three of these sort of figures. The special color version, uh, my first first Showa Ghidorah, and this one all seem to have really tight hips on their right side, or your left looking at it from, from front on here. So get a hairdryer, heat up that joint, and just gently sort of work it until it's really smooth. So that's how you help uh, tight joints. With loose joints, what you can do for example, if you have a joint that's falling off constantly or it's just really loose, you take the ball joint off and then you cover the actual ball joint with something. Uh, you can either use like a floor lacquer, something like a, you know, a lacquer that you'd use for flooring is a common substance, or you can also, I've heard you can also use nail polish. And I've done that on my, um, where is it? This guy. This is the bootleg figure of the uh, Godzilla <laughs> 2019 figure, the one with the weird gnarly face. So he had an issue with his tail falling off, and I did that to one of the ball joints, and that, that joint works flawlessly now, really well. Now I have another one that it still falls off pretty easily, but if I do the same thing there, it might help it a lot. So those are your tips for ball joints. But yeah, let's see how well this goes in, because I remember this was pretty challenging on my special color version. Oh, but it went in... Okay, not sure if it's completely in, but it's holding in for the most part on this thing pretty well. And his, his other ankle here. Which I'll just swivel his foot around, because I kind of prefer this little uh, piece right above his foot to be the opposite way that they have them installed for some reason. We'll see how this goes. Yeah, that went in without a problem. Okay, so this Ghidorah's joints working pretty well. That also, I'm not sure if the frame rate on my video is okay, so I'm really, really sorry if the picture is kind of not working. My camera's being a little bit of a bitch recently, and the <laughs> frame rate's just a pain. But yeah, you may just have to work these joints, and like I said, a hairdryer will just make everything flow. So. That's like the only real cute quality control issue I've seen on these figures, is some of the joints need a hairdryer to heat them up, to loosen them. Other than that, and of course the really weird paint work, but other than that, these figures seem to function really well, surprisingly. But yeah, let's get his, his wings on. His wings look pretty much identical to the first one. This figure in general, pretty identical to the first one, from what I can tell. Same really bland beige paint job, but beautiful sculpt work and pretty good articulation. So let's get that wing on. There we go. There we go, guys. There's our, our second Showa King Ghidorah. So 
this is kind of a good example to kind of uh, show you guys the quality control of this thing because I didn't intend to get two of these but this has actually got the added bonus of me being able to determine at least seeing two of these things what the QC issues could be especially maybe even three if you count the first one up there and out of all of all of the issues that I can tell like obviously the paintwork is the same between the two it's actually pretty consistent uh, let's look at the eyes. The eyes aren't that great on some of these ones. So you may have QC issues with how the eyes are painted. This guy's got a pretty botched eye on one of these faces. I don't know if you can see that. But this guy Like, you know minor paint issues uh, well the paint is really consistent like I said the dry brushing down the wings looks really nice I really love that actually this the articulation is done really beautifully especially the necks because it has that really cool ball joint system in there that works just so much better than even the the actual monster arts Ghidorahs that we've gotten the other ones <laughs> which tend to fall off like even the 2019 King Ghidorah figure I, the, the necks are okay, sometimes I have heads falling off, and I always have the tails falling off on the 2019 King Ghidorah. Not to mention those huge wings have a plethora of issues. <laughs> but uh, can, all things considered, these things actually have really good articulation. Like I said, a hair dryer will just help ensure that it's all functioning perfectly, because other than that, these things can be, you know fixed those sort of issues with a hairdryer that they may have. Yeah, just so, looking at both of them, they're pretty consistent between the two, so I guess the quality control is at least somewhat consistent between these two, and where is the box? And yeah, I hope this video kind of gave, gives you a nice idea of what to expect when trying to buy a 2019 bootleg. Now, I've actually put out a little video with a bunch of tips, just a handful of tips that I've come up with for helping you guys uh, in when you're trying to buy an actual uh, Dora 2019 figure, if you're trying to buy one of these things, it just gives you a couple of helpful tips on what to do in the sit in those situations to either um, know what you're buying to if you're trying to track down an actual show one or to avoid uh, being conned into buying bootlegs. So. Uh, do check that video out. I will have a um, a link to it at the e end of the video, and I may also have a link to my full review of this thing. Um, if not, then just look on my channel. They'll be in the in some of the recent videos. You can't miss them. And um, I don't actually know what I'm gonna do with this second Ghidorah. Some people have suggested that I do it as uh, have it as a giveaway, and as much as I would love to. Uh, for one, my channel is probably nowhere near as big as it, as it should be before I start doing giveaways. Two, this thing was bloody expensive, so I don't really want to give it away. And three, despite my ever-growing collection of very expensive Godzilla figures, in my day-to-day -day life I'm actually bloody poor. I'm actually kind of struggling to find work at the moment, so financially it's not very viable. I'm probably more likely to try and sell this guy. Um, perhaps even customize it and sell it off as a customized figure um, <laughs> just to warrant uh, trying to get a little bit more out of it potentially because like I said I had to pay a bit extra for the one with the box now if I am selling it and some of you guys are interested I probably will sell the one with the box because I don't really have room for another box <laughs> it's a bootleg box so I don't really care too much um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys have any questions or comments and any of that good stuff, uh, please leave those in the comment section below. And um, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe, because that's always awesome when you guys do it. Um, I've actually been really just proud and happy to see this channel growing the way it has. I've, 
Like, I've never in my life would have expected that it would get to this many subscribers, like, um, just at, at this rate at least, so that's bloody awesome. I'm still, part of me is a little bit torn because I look at the other channels with, like, thousands of subscribers, I'm like, no, yeah. how, how did they do that? But, you know, a couple of hundred subscribers is still, like, blowing my mind in its own way, so... Thank you guys for all the support and all of that good stuff. Um, it really means a lot. And, um, yeah, that's probably it for this video. So, make sure all your vinyl is radiated vinyl. Over and out!